In this video, I'll be giving you my top 10 list for hybrid teaching tools. The hybrid teaching model isn't likely to go away anytime soon, so I wanted to put together this video to show you the best tools for bringing all your students into digital spaces and getting them to be able to participate in your class, regardless of whether or not they are physically in your classroom or whether they are coming into your class online. And all the tools I'll be showing you in this video will also work if you're implementing a hybrid or blended model in your physical class. Classroom. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the new EdTech Classroom. The first tool on my list is Classkick, which is an ideal program if you want students to be working independently at their own pace, and you also want to be able to give students immediate feedback. Similar to a program like Nearpod, Classkick is going to allow you to build interactive lessons for your students and see their responses coming through in real time. With Classkick, however, you're able to see all your students working on their assignments in a single grid view. And in each workspace, both you and your students can choose from any of the interactivity tools. And there are many. Students can choose to draw, record audio, type, drag and drop, take pictures, etc. And Classkick offers two features that Nearpod does not. One is the ability to jump into a student's workspace to give them immediate feedback. When in a workspace, you can choose from all the response tools as a way to give students feedback. And you can also access pre-written comment banks that you've created to automate the process without losing the feeling of personalization. The other is that in Classkick, students can also raise a digital hand to get help. And help isn't just limited to conversations between the student and teacher. If you enable the function, students can jump into each other's workspaces to help each other out. Classkick does have some pre-made content that you should definitely check out before you make your own lessons. But Classkick would also be a particularly good choice for teachers who already have pre-built slides or static PDFs as part of your curriculum and you just want to make that material interactive. The second tool on my list is Whiteboard 5. On the surface, Whiteboard 5 might look similar to Classkick because they're both essentially digital workspace, digital whiteboard type programs. They both allow teachers and students to use a variety of response tools and they both allow teachers to give students real-time feedback. But whereas Classkick is really ideal for self-paced lessons, Whiteboard 5 works really well if you want all students to be on the same page at the same time. If you've ever used mini whiteboards in the classroom with your students, Whiteboard 5 is essentially a digital mini whiteboard. But of course, because it's digital, it's also a supercharged whiteboard. Whiteboard 5 works particularly well for showing students a quick demo on your board and then have students practice quickly on their own boards to apply what you just taught. When you're presenting material, you can use any of the multimedia tools to present a lesson. And that could also just be something as simple as adding some shapes and text to create something like a KWL chart. After you've modeled for students, you can push your whiteboard out to student boards as a fixed background that they can write directly on top of. As students are responding, you can see them writing in real time and you can click on their boards to see their work as well as provide them with feedback. And if a student has a response you'd like to share with the class, you can also choose to add that student's response to the teacher whiteboard for everybody else to see. Third on my list isn't an instructional technology program, but actually a piece of hardware, and that's the One by Wacom pen tablet. I always get excited about programs that help teachers do things that would be really difficult to do without them, and the One by Wacom definitely fulfills that need by helping you much more easily write on a digital whiteboard. If you've ever actually tried to teach a lesson by drawing with your trackpad on a digital whiteboard, then you know what I mean when I say that it doesn't work very well. On the other hand, with a pen tablet, you can draw with nearly the same fluid motions that you would using a regular marker. When you combine a pen tablet with the digital whiteboard, you'll have a system whereby you can teach lessons, invite students to collaborate on your board, create templates from that whiteboard background, and even save images of that whiteboard to post to your learning management system. All that is significantly more realistic if you have the ability to easily write on your digital whiteboard. And the reason why I'm recommending the one by Wacom as opposed to say an iPad and an Apple Pencil is just that it's significantly more affordable and they're also compatible with Chromebooks so students can use them too. Fourth on the list is Flipgrid. Like its name suggests, Flipgrid is an ideal tool for flipping your classroom. And I would argue that it's even more 
more effective in a hybrid teaching environment than it is if you're using it in a fully in-person environment. And that's because Flipgrid has students respond to prompts and each other via video. And you can imagine that it can be somewhat difficult to have all your students recording videos at the same time in a single classroom. Flipgrid is extremely popular in the teaching community for a few key reasons. One is that it's completely free. Another is that Flipgrid is continually adding new features, such as the ability to screen record without needing to use a separate app. And Flipgrid also makes a concerted effort to bring fun factor to their app, so students can add stickers, filters, creative text, etc., to their videos. These features really only serve the purpose of making their tool a little bit more fun to use, but it's a subtle nuance that makes a difference. Perhaps more importantly though, since Flipgrid is all about creating personal video content through a webcam, it's a tool that can help you create community and a sense of togetherness even though you might not all be in class together at the same time. The same is true for fully in-person classes as well. You'll likely find that a student who's reluctant to speak up in class is more than willing to record a video to share with the rest of their class. So Flipgrid helps you open up the ways that students can participate and find a sense of academic belonging. I have several videos on my channel about how to use Flipgrid as well as some about the latest updates and I'll be sure to link those in the video description so you can check them out. My fifth top tech tool for hybrid teaching is Padlet. If you watch my channel regularly, you know that I'm a big fan of Padlet for its versatility. The combination of board types and the ability to add pretty much any kind of multimedia to a board means there's almost nothing you can't do with Padlet. You can use it as a digital workspace where you can control the pace of your lessons. You can use it for small group work or even for creativity projects like digital map making. For example, you can create introductory activities where students respond to a prompt using the response tools that are available in Padlet. Or you can even run an entire lesson out of Padlet using the shelf board by adding new columns for each part of your lesson and having students post their responses below. Since you can add links as posts in Padlet too, you can direct students over to other programs such as Google Drawings, have them finish their work in that program, and then have them upload their file back to Padlet. I also have several videos on my channel about how to teach with Padlet, including a demo hybrid teaching lesson in Padlet, and I'll put those in the video description too. By the way, if you're finding the tips that I'm sharing in this video useful, be sure to hit the like button and also let me know in the comments below. What is your favorite tech tool for hybrid teaching? Number six on my list is Pear Deck. Pear Deck is ideal if you have Google Slides or PowerPoint presentations that you want to make interactive and you also want to make that interactivity available to students irrespective of whether or not they're physically in the classroom with you. With Pear Deck, you can easily add an interactive questions to your slides, insert a link to push out to students, create a poll, or ask students to draw a response or drag and drop icons. Students access the interactive slides by using a class code, so they can easily participate regardless of whether or not they're physically in your classroom. Plus, you can set up Pear Deck to be teacher-led or student-paced, which is useful if you want to use stations in your hybrid classroom or if you need to assign work for students to complete independently outside of class. The seventh tool on my list is Cami. Cami is a tool that's going to help you digitize your curriculum, and it's particularly powerful if you have a lot of static documents like PDFs or images that you want to make interactive. Just like all the other tools on the list, students don't need to physically be in the classroom to participate in a Cami activity. Some of my favorite ways to use Cami are to have students annotate text to search for unknown words, as well as ask questions while they are reading. You can also add a page beneath a PDF document that you upload to add a processing activity, such as recording the main idea of an article or even doing something like sketching out a plot diagram. You can also assign a single document to a group of students so that they can work on that document together. And you can even set up asynchronous assignments for your students by using the internal screen recording tool to post your instructions visually. Cami also has numerous accessibility tools such as speech to text and text to speech and teachers and students can converse with one another using audio comments or even by recording a video and embedding it directly in a document. If you want to learn more about how to use Cami, then check out the recorded version of my live show. I'll put that link in the video description. Speaking of audio notes, the eighth tool on my list is Moat. Similar to what I was saying about Flipgrid, Recording audio notes rather than just leaving text comments can help build a sense of community and togetherness, even if you aren't all physically in the same room together. Moat is incredibly easy to use. You just need to click on the extension and then click to record your audio note. One feature that makes Moat really stand out is the ability to save your audio note to use again in the future. 
Reusing common feedback can help you automate your systems and save you time, all while continuing to provide students with targeted feedback that feels more personalized because students can actually listen to the feedback as opposed to just reading it. I also have a couple tutorials on my channel about Moat that I'll link in the video description. The ninth tool on my list is Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is another edtech tool that helps you significantly upgrade your instructions simply by adding checks for understanding to videos. As students answer their questions, they can self-monitor whether or not they're understanding the content, and you can easily see who's getting it and who isn't through automated grading of their responses. The other thing that makes Edpuzzle so useful is the fact that many teachers have already created interactive videos and added them to the Edpuzzle library. Basically, anytime you find a video you want to show students, you could check to see if it's already in the library. The last tool isn't one that individual teachers can purchase, but I think any school that's implementing hybrid instruction should seriously consider getting Hapara. Hapara is a teacher and student workflow management system that helps you implement some of the same structures and systems that you would in a traditional classroom. But the difference is that it gives you that understanding of all the work students are doing as opposed to just the work in a single program like Classkick. With Apara, you can pass out digital copies of assignments to students without needing to direct them to Google Classroom. You can see what students have out on their digital desks and send students personal messages asking them to close unrelated tabs. You can freeze computers if you need to to get your class's attention, focus browsing so students can't jump over to other tabs while taking a quiz, as well as push websites directly out to student computers rather than relying on each individual student manually entering a URL. It's similar to Classkick in that it gives you a clear bird's eye view of what students are working on and you can easily jump in and give individual students feedback. All these features work even if students aren't physically in the building, they just need to be using a school managed device. That summary is also really just scratching the surface of what Hapara can do and if you're a G Suite for Education school, I would recommend that you consider bringing it in as part of your instructional technology plan. Thanks so much for watching this video to the end. If you want to learn more tips about hybrid and blended learning or if you need to learn more about the programs that I show in this video, be sure to watch that playlist above. And if you need some help getting started with technology integration in general, then be sure to grab my free resource pack and I've also put a link for that in the video description below.